חינוך in 21st century. חינוך, we know it's one of the holiest missions we have for towards our kids. Our children is חינוך, how to educate them properly. And 21st century obviously has its challenges. We know in תהילים דוד המלך says, תהילים חט, מה אנוש כי תזכרנו ובן אדם כי תפקדנו. מה אנוש כי תזכרנו ובן אדם כי תפקדנו, זה מפרשים זה פיקדון, it's our kids. That the Kodosh Baruch Hu says, that you know, פיקדון, our kids are precious, to call it deposits, that the Kodosh Baruch Hu trusts with us. They are not ours. I think Rav Wolbe used to say, I have five kids, I have to say, you don't have any kids, these are all Hashem's kids. These are Hashem kids, that they are pikadon. It's a precious deposit that the Kodosh Baruch has given to us to, to, to do our best, how to raise them, how to educate them. And we know, youth, it's, it's, it's a beginning, it's Genesis, beginning. And in Kohelet, David HaMelech, Yeshua HaMelech says, Hechacham einav berosho. Smart person's eyes are in his head. Rabbi Chaim Vital asks an obvious question. He says, what, what do you mean? Hechacham einav berosho. Everybody's eyes are in his head. Well, what is, you know, Hechacham einav berosho. So Rabbi Chaim Vital says an unbelievable insight. He says, Hechacham, a smart person, his his looks, his thoughts, his focus, it's on the beginning. Because beginnings are everything. In Judaism, beginnings, Genesis, it's everything. So, you know, Bereshit, uh, Gaon says the entire Torah is in the word Bereshit. Bereshit, beginnings are everything. I just, really, you know, recently saw, if you know, the Tinder Bishwam by Yochai, never had a Bet Midrash. There was no yeshiva from Shrom Bar Yochai. Always he would go out. But the Zohar HaKadosh says, Ve'ala bechakla beine ilane ve'yatve. They would go out to the, to the you know, to gardens. And there they would sit and they would study. How come? Why would you go out? The Gaon says, because it's when you go out to the nature, you're very close to Hashem. Because the nature is untouched. By human beings, right? When you go out and, and go on, says the beginnings are everything. Beginnings are everything, and and this is you know going that that's what I'm shown by Yochai. Go on says that maybe the house, any house that was built, how do you know what kind of att- intentions and attentions the builders had? What was going in their minds? Was their mind pure when they're building this house or not? So that affects the house. Gaon says, a uh, shul that was built, the Kedushava Tahara, that in all the builders, everybody had the purity of their thoughts and kavanot, people would go there and daven with kavana. It's all the, otherwise, you're better off. Like Rabbi Shom Yochai, he would not trust. He would go out. Beine ilayne. And, you know, there is, there is a Gemara in Baba Metzia that, you know, uh, uh, Gaon Mivilda, Beautifully elaborates on this. We are familiar with this. With this, uh, uh, I remember 32 years ago when we had our first banquet for for school. Uh, I <laughs> I made a video about this. I remember. Rabbi, the, the Gemara says that there was some kind of uh, argument between between different rabbanim. So in that, it, this is Gemara in Pei Baba Metzia Pei Amud Bet. So the Gemara says, "Amal Rabchia Rabchanina Bahade Didika Mincacht Mincit the Avdi le Torah de Rotish Takach Mi Israel." He said, "I am the one that I cause that the Torah should not be forgotten from 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 the Jews." My Avid, now what he says? What did what did Rabchia do? He says, "Azlina." The Shadina Kitna the Gadilna Nishbe. Yeah, I went and I planted I, I guess flax and from those flax I made I made nets traps and I went with Sayid with Sayidna Tove and I went and I 
I, uh, I hunted, I trapped. Um, Tove is Tzvaim, Tzvi is Ahu, right? Deers. Umachilna bisraihu liyatme. I shechted these uh, deers and I gave the, 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 the meat to be eaten by, uh, by, you know, by orphans. The arichna megilta. And then, after I shechted these animals, I took from the, the, the skin, I skin, I processed the skin, I made parchments. Right? The katavna chamisha chumshe. And I wrote the chumash on these parchments and, and I started, like, you know, uh, and I went and I started teaching Torah. So Gaon Mivilna asks the obvious question, what kind of business is that? Right? You wanna, he wants to go and to write Sifre Torah, I mean those days they have, you know, on, on parchments, go to the market, buy, par, 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 they have parchments in the market, go in the market, buy it, and, uh, you know, write it and uh, yalla, start, start teaching. But what is this business of going and planting the flax in order to make the nets, the traps, and then go to traps, the deals? Why do you need that? Gaon says the same thing. It all depends on the, you know, the, the purity of, of, of a person's intentions. That from the, from the time he would go and, and plant the, the flax, the Rabbi Chia would say, Hashem, please, you know, that, you know, these things that are make, and it, it, it could be matzliach. That's why Rabbi Chia threw, otherwise there's no reason. He could have just gone to the market, gotten some, you know, parchments, written, written the thing, and, and, and uh, the, the Torah, and start teaching. So we see it's the same yesod. It all goes, it, it depends at the, at the beginnings. The beginnings have have, it all has to do with the beginning. If the beginning is right, Be'ezrat Hashem, whatever is going to come afterwards, it takes after it. Right, you know, the Zohar HaKadosh says, uh, like, you know, when a person, like, you know, wants to, to build a house, it's a do Hanukkah Tabayt, the same thing. That the beginning of, and some people, you know, there is, you know, I've done it for some people, when they're building a house, Mamash, you know, there was a person, like, you know, when they started, like, but wanted to pour the concrete, I went there and there is a Zohar. I, I, it's, it's in Hanukkah Tabayit. That you know, it says that you know, it's, that from the beginning when you build it, it should be be with the pure uh, in intentions, the kavanot, and then whether it's a house, whether it's a shul. I told you, Gaon Yehuda says, is this a, 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 a shul, but Knesset. If when you know here when we were building this, you know. The, Mr. Javaheri did a lot of carpentry, and I told him, I said, please have kavanot, that you know, that do everything. I knew this guy, that everything, and Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem, it's a, it's a holy place. That, you know, we have been, all the Torah and Tefillah that has been in, 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 in this place. It's all, it has to do with the purity of the kavanot. Um, we go, we move on to see, to learn this yesod, right, about the story of. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, right, we know the Gemara in uh, uh, its Lamed Gimel Amud Bet tells the story that, you know, how was it that, you know, that uh, that uh, Shimon Bar Yochai ended up like he went to the cave, etc. So the Gemara says, how did it start? The Gemara says, The Yatve once Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Shimon, the Yatve Rabbi Yehuda ben Gerim Gabayhu, Patach Rabbi Yehuda va'Amar Kaman Naim Maasehen Shel Umazu. That you know, they were sitting, and Rabbi Yehuda it was very politically correct at the time. I think you know the Romans, the, you know they were ruling in Eretz Israel, and he came and he praised the regime, and he said, "Wow, look how how they have built uh, our land." He says, "Tiknu uh, shvakim, they built markets for us. Tiknu gesharim, they made bridges for us. Tiknu marchatzaot, you know, public uh, bath, baths and stuff." Rabbi Yossi shatak. Rabbi Yossi didn't say anything. Neena Rabbi Shimon bar Yochai va'amar. Then comes the, you know, Rabbi Shimon bar Yochai. Now, who is Rabbi Shimon bar Yochai? Right. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, we know that Rabbi Akiva had, the Gemara says in Yevamot, 
Rabbi Akiva had 24,000 Talmidim. And, uh, and we know that, you know, they, uh, they perished. <coughs> in the day, the days of Omer, <coughs> all the 24,000 perished because they learned Ayu Kavodze was it. Because they, they were lacking in Badan Lachavero. They didn't have respect for, for each other. Then the Gemara says, after this happened, Ha'olam Shamam. Like in the Jewish world was dead, actually. Mamash. But Rabbi Akiva, he Mamash, we have to learn from Rabbi Akiva not to give up. The Gemara says, Rabbi Akiva went to the Darom, and he picked five Talmidim. One of them was Rabbi Shwam Yochai. And, right, from these Talmidim, there was a renaissance, there was a resurrection of the Jewish nation. That's what the Gemara says. Before this, Ha'olam Shamam. The Jewish world was dead, so to speak. Rabbi Akiva went and he picked Hamishat Talmidim, these five students. You know, one of them was Rabbi Shun Bar Yochai. And from these, Rabbi, these and, and you know, it's very interesting to remember when, when Rabbi Akiva um, started teaching them, he was put in jail. <laughs> he was put in jail. Rabbi Shun Bar Yochai, his father was very well to do. So he went, he was going to, to, to Rabbi Akiva, teach me Torah. He, he loved to learn. So Rabbi Akiva told him, uh, you know, you tell Ma'asher, Ma'asher rotze linak, ha'para rotze la'anik. More than a calf wants to nurse, the cow wants to milk, to nurse, you know. But you know, it's, it's dangerous. So no, if you don't teach me Torah, I'm going to talk, go to, tell my father, he's very influential, they're going to kill you. He was forcing Rabbi Akiva, right? He had such a love for Torah, Rabbi Shumar Bar Yochai. Anyway, so here, after Rabbi Shumar Bar Yochai came by Rishab, Rabbi Shumar Bar Yochai, I guess maybe because also he was wealthy, he wasn't scared. He would speak out his mind. <laughs> he wasn't politically correct. He got up and he said, uh, he said, whatever they did, they did for themselves. They don't care about us. He says, he says, Whatever these Romans did, it's for their own sake. He says, shvakim, right? It's uh, you know. He says they made markets. It's lohushiv bahen zonot to put there, like you know, uh, you know, zonot to to miss to 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 take away our our youth, right? Merchatzaot. Um, you know, whatever they did is to collect taxes, etc. They didn't do anything for us. So then there was a, you know, there was a Gertzedek there. He didn't know anything. He went and he went and he said outside what was said inside the Bet Midrash. And Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai was, I mean, Rabbi Yehuda was uh, elevated, right? He became Rosh Hashanah because he spoke politically correct. He praised the regime. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai the Gezera was that he has to die. They, they're going to kill him. So Rabbi Shumachai, we know the story, he, he ran away. He ran away, the Gemara says, first, for some time, he was in a Bet Midrash, and his wife, him and his son, Rabbi Shumachai, and his son, Rabbi Eliezer, right, they were in a Bet Midrash, a hidden Bet Midrash, and, uh, and the, uh, the, his wife would bring them uh, food. Then, uh, then Rabbi, Rabbi Shumachai, he figured, Rabbi Shumachai's wife was a, Daughter of Rabbi Pinchas ben Yair. He was afraid that you're going to take his wife and torture her, and, and, and she's going to, they, they, they're going to be revealed. So they ran away and they went to a cave. Right? They went to a cave and they were hiding there for 12 years. Right? And these 12 years, the Gemara says, every, you know, Hakadosh Baruch who made a miracle for them, there was a carob tree, right? I saw this year in Midrash that, you know, this carob tree on Fridays, Lichvot Shabbat, would give dates, <laughs> right? And they had water. Uh, so the Parnassah was, was given by Hashem. So every day they would, uh, they would dig a uh, hole, they would take off their garments because they wanted the garment to be, uh, to be good for, for, for davening. They don't know how many years they're going to be there. And they would, and then, and then they would just, you know, take they would take the garments and cover themselves with sand and learn Torah. After they came out, you know, after twelve years they were in, the, in that cave. Twelve years they were in that cave. So it says, right, 
12 years they were in that cave after they came out. I mean, it says Eliyahu Hanavi, after 12 years, Ata Eliyahu become a pitcha de ma'arta. He stood at the entrance of the cave and he said, Amar, man lud ele bar Yochai, the mit kesar. Who could give the news to Bar Yochai that the Caesar died? And usually, when the Caesar would die, the Gezerot would be finished. It's over. He's safe. The course is clear. Ubatil Gezerte. Nafku v'chazu inche the kag. Right? So I'm not going to go into the whole story, right? They come out wherever they would look. Uh, they saw people are like planting and doing what their mundane lives. They really, wherever they would look, it would be a fire. Hashem, a heavenly voice said, go back to your cave. They went to their cave, and then well, there was one more year, and then, now when they came out, they learned some more Torah, they were more positive, and uh, Rabbi Shom Bar Yochai saw somebody on Friday, was like, you know, with Hadassim, Lichvot Shabbat, he was going, mm-hmm. look, you know. So then it says that his, uh, his father-in-law, Rabbi Pinchas Ben Yair, right, he, he saw him, he saw Rabbi when, when they, uh, right? So it says, the Gemara, the Gemara tells us, Shomar Rabbi Pinchas Ben Yair Chatnei, he was his father-in-law. V'nafak la'ape, he loved him dearly, Rabbi Pinchas Ben Yair. So he went, Aylei le'beit banye, he took him for after 13 years to bathe him, right? When he was like you know, washing and all the dust and everything from him, like, you know, it was bleeding, etc. Repurchus Ben Yair was, 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 was crying. Hava Kabachi, the Kanatru Dimat Einei, the Kamtsavchale. And you know, and the tears would fall on his wounds, and it, the tears are salty, and the Roshon Baruch would, would, would scream. Of pain, out of pain. Amar le, so Rabbi Pinchas ben Yair said, Oy li shira'itich b'chach. Oy wait to me that I see my son, son like this. You're suffering like this. Amar le, ashrecha shira'itani b'chach. He says, the other way. Ashrecha should be happy. He says, she'ilmale ro'itini b'chach lo matzat b'chach. If I would not have Learned these 12 years, 13 years in the cave, I would not be what I am now. So Eliyahu Hanavi would come and, and teach him Torah. And that's how Rabbi Shun Bar Yochai and his son became, Rabbi Shun Bar Yochai became what, 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 what he was. Before he went to the cave, he wasn't at all in this kind of madrigot, right? It all happened after the cave. So you see, I was, this year for the first time, I was thinking like, you know, why did you need that? Why did Rabbi Shon Bar Yochai need to be isolated for 12 years, 13 years in a cave to become to call Rabbi Shon Bar Yochai? And I was thinking, maybe this is what the Gaon says and he says all over. Because it's really, this is the beginning. This is the renaissance of the Jewish nation. As the Gemara says, before that, Ha'olam Haya Shamem. Um, there was no Torah. And if there is no Torah, there is no Judaism. We know that. Right? When Hashem gave the Torah, it says, if I, you accept the Torah, fine. Otherwise, Sham Tehek Muratchem. Over there, you're going to be buried. Why well, doesn't it say Khan? See, that, the Farshim say, it doesn't make, make a difference where. If there is no Torah, even in Eretz Israel, even in Eretz Israel, if there is no Torah, there is no Judaism. Ein umatenu umayla betorotiham. What has kept our nation, it's, it's Torah, right? Unfortunately, for thousands of years, we didn't have our own land, our own army, etc. But we survived, because we have Torah. Torah is Jewish survival. If there is no Torah, so that's why when the Talmud Rabbi Akiva uh, uh, passed away, Ha'olam was Shamem. It was uh, like a midbar, there was no Judaism. So here... Rabbi Akiva is coming and he wants to start like, through Rabbi Shon Bar Yochai. This is really the renaissance. This is like, you know, the re, re-emergence of the Jewish nation. And since it's the beginning, the beginning has to be the purest that it could be. And maybe that's why. Uh, that, that's why Rabbi Shon Bar Yochai had to be isolated, totally detached 
He didn't know what was going on in the world till El Yohanna became and he said, you know, who is going to get go and tell uh, 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 Rav Shumba Yochai that you know that the Caesar is dead? He was totally isolated, right? And it was needed, as he says, if not for this, he would not have become Rav Shumba Yochai. That isolation was to ensure that this new beginning, this new genesis, new a new emergence. Is, is pure because everything goes and grows from those seeds that are planted in that, in, that, in that genesis. So now why am I telling you this and what does it have to do with, with you know, education, chinuch, in the 21st century? You know, I mean, here it's interesting. It talks, it talks like, you know, he says, the, 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 Rabbi Akiva talks about, he says, Tiknush Vakin, Right. All the exposure, what's happening now, like in, in the world, in the 21st century, we had, we had never, never, ever had these kind of circumstances that our youth are at risk. Right? With the internet and all these things that's going on, it's really, it's mamash. Our, all our kids are at risk. Right? The Gemara says, like, you know, after Cheta Egel, Moshe Rabbeinu told Hashem, Hashem, HaKadosh Baruch what do you expect from them? Right, that they made Chet, the, the Egel, the golden calf, you gave them all the gold from Egypt, etc., etc., that's a consequence. The Gemara says, it's like Moshal, like, you know, if like a person would take his son, his teenage son, bathe him and dress him, etc., and you put a bag full of golden coins, uh, you... Uh, you hang around his, uh, his neck, and you take him near Shuk Shel Zonot. What should he do not to sin? I mean, it's, it's, it's actually mission impossible. It's mission impossible. The Yetzar Hara is, is, is awake. The Yetzar Hara didn't, wasn't invented uh, now. It's, uh, right? It's, uh, and, and what I call, uh, it's not Hollywood, it's Hollywood, is. Uh, it's celebrating, and it's, uh, and it was never, never, ever before, right? We were, we were all teenagers, right? We all had Yetzirah Raz, etc., right? But, you know, who, you know, to do anything, you know, inappropriate, it, 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 it would take... Now, it's, it's Maya Asebe Lo Yechta. Maya Asebe Lo Yechta. You don't need to go out anywhere. You have the smartphone, right? You don't need anything else. And, you know, a lot of parents, they're very naive, right? They think, no, you know, you know, they put codes, etc., etc. The kids could outsmart everybody and anybody. And this is a problem all over. It's a problem all over. And the kids, and, and you see, this is the youth. We have to realize. The kids are a picadon. It's a deposit. It's a precious deposit that HaKadosh Baruch Hu, has entrusted us, given to us, and we have to do, we have to make sure that these kids, right, they are going to have that, that genesis, that the beginning, it's as pure as it could get. It's, it's really it's the parent's responsibility. You see, there is, you know, we know we have all kinds of schools, we have Torah schools, and you have like a more modern Orthodox school, so to speak. It's all within the realm of, like, you know, orthodoxy. But you see, there is a big, big divide on how, how to tackle technology, right? Schools, Torah schools, they, they, they don't allow that you know, kids should not... I mean, obviously, it takes a lot of... You see, the, 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 the pro, really, just to share with you another Gaon Vilna, that the Gaon says that, you know, the poor the pit that they, they threw Yosef HaTzadik in, the Torah says, Habor Rek En Bomai. That's what it says. The Gemara says, obviously, if it's empty, there is no water there. So why does it have the Torah have to repeat, Habor Rek En Bomai? So the Gemara answers, Mayim En Bo, but Nechashim Va'akravim Yeshmo. That the reason the Torah says Habor Rek En Bomayim is, I wish it was empty. But it was empty from water 
but it was full of Nechashim and Akrabim, Scorpios and snakes, etc. Gaon says this is what in it, it, it brings a Zohar Kadosh, that in the brain, our minds are like this bore. And the Gaon says if you don't fill it with Torah, with water, it's not going to be empty. It's going to be full of Nechashim and Akrabim. If you eat Halvai, Halvai, you know, okay, there's no water, empty. No, it's going to be empty. If it's not, if it, there is no water there, it's not going to be empty. It's going to be full of Nechashim and Akrabim. And that's what, what happens. When, when people put their kids in public schools, it's mamash, it's bor rek en bomayim, guaranteed, it's full of Nechashim and Akrabim. I don't have to tell you what, what's the latest things that is going on, right? Now, if a lot of states, they have rules to therapists. You know, therapists are uh, supposed to, uh, you know, to report anything uh, inappropriate they, they hear about. They are mandated reporters. And you should know. In California, if, there is a, if you have a boy or a girl, if you have a boy that, you know, it exactly likes to play with dolls and to get dressed like girls, etc. Has certain tendencies. You're not. You, you, you're supposed to encourage that, and maybe to, to try to start hormone therapy to, that, to to transgender. If you try to walk them out, talk them out of it, the therapist would be a mandated reporter. They're going to report it to the government, right? They are all over. You, you know, you go like you know the birth certificate, boy, girl, other, right? I mean, sometimes, you know, people, people they don't know. We want our kid, when he grows up, to decide which gender they're going to be. What's going on with, like, you know, all these Hollywood is creating constantly. They have, you know, but just listen to the news. Whatever, the movies that they, uh, they, they create, certain percentage has, a 20, I don't know, has to say something to encourage transgender and this and uh, on and on. Right? This is, this is, Liberalism, and this is just like you know, being uh, this is 21st century, century American and, and, and world. Even kids, you go to, I, I went a couple of years ago, I took my kids to the Beverly Hills, uh, the public library, and I saw they were advertising some book for kids. And the, the theme is there are all kinds of families. There are some families, there is a daddy and mommy. There are some families, there are two mommies. There are some families, there are two, and I don't know what... Tra- this, this, is, this is what's going on there. This is what the kids get exposed out there, right? And a kid that has access to smartphone, that's, you know, it, it's... What could he do not to... Not to get off of off, off track. It's impossible. Mission impossible. We need to create for our kids an environment like Rishon Bayochai. We need like you know, this kind of cane to try. It's not going to be obvious if you're not going to be successful 100%. It's <coughs> impossible. Impossible. But we have to do our best. Right? That's why I'm saying, you know, in school I, I tell the kids, you could go to any high school you want to go. We recommend Right, not only that in school in Tashwar we have a policy of like you know we have, we work on it very hard, really to keep the kids like protected. Right, they cannot have smartphones. The parents are supposed to have filters. The kids, if they have to go for to, to do some kind of internet, there should be supervision, etc., etc. But even when they go to high school, they are not old enough to have that. Right, and a mature person, yes, maybe he's gonna. Even that, we have so many problems with. But at least, right, it's, it's a challenge all over. But at least the, 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 the kids, it's our duty. It's our duty to, to do our best to provide these kids an environment that this, first of all, this, this board is not wreck to put there as much water, Torah, as possible. If you don't put Torah, and the kids have to be excited about the Torah, right? It has to be taught to, to them in, in, in a way besimcha and you know to challenge a challenge etc that, that they love to learn mm-hmm. to fill that bore with as, as much pure Torah as possible otherwise it's not going to be empty the shikasim or masim the the nechashim and akrabim are all over all over waiting to enter this pure pure borot which is 
the neshama of our kids. So um, this is this is something that you know I think it's 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 um, probably one of the, the the holiest and most important tasks, right? That the parents have for you know. Uh, to, 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 as far as like, you know, providing the proper education environment for the kids. Then we know it says, "Veshinantam levanecha vedibar tabam." Veshinantam levanecha vedibar tabam. I think the Chatam Sofer says, "How come it says, 'Veshinantam levanecha vedibar tabam'? It should have said, 'Veshinantam levanecha vedibrubam.' You should teach." Your kids, right? And they should talk about the Torah. But it doesn't say that. It says, "Veshinantam levanecha vedibar tabam." Whatever way you want your kids <coughs> to act, you have to act the same way, right? You cannot tell your kids to preach to your kids something you don't practice yourself. And this is something that you know every family, like you know, to have to to at at home. We have, like you know, we have ourselves to be like you know careful about these kind of things what we look what we don't look etc etc and other things right if, if, if we talk about to, to our kids about emunah and bitachon and, and we we don't have that emunah and bitachon and the kids see that you know the, the, the father or the mother they lose themselves and they, they're depressed etc etc what kind of message we are giving you could you could talk about bitachon yomam uh, if we don't practice it in our own uh, conduct, there is no way to teach our kids. There is no way. No, it's it's not possible. When you talk about our to, to, to our kids about honesty, integrity, in business, in everything else, we need to act like that. We have to be, you know, the the, the, the kids, the kids, you know, they, you know, the way we act affects them much more than all the preaching uh, that you know we do, right? This is, the, and that's what the, really what makes chinuch the most uh, <coughs> difficult task we have in life is that it's not about the kids. It's what it's about us. It's not it's not about the kids. It's about us, right? It's it's you know when we have you know when we act and we live by the Torah standards, right? That you know I, we we uh, constantly I, I tell the kids in in, in 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 school it's like you look. Uh, the entire Sefer Bereshit, right? HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't give us any mitzvot. Out of 613 mitzvot, right? Only three mitzvot are in Bereshit. 610 are in four Sfarim, right? So, so what, what is Bereshit? Bereshit is all about Derech Eretz. Bereshit is all about how to be a mensch. Right? We learn from Avraham, Avinu, Yitzchak, Yaakov, all this, uh, their, their lives, what we learn from. It's called, Bereshit is called Sefer Yashar. Right, you know, the, the, the proper how we should interact with each other. And the kids see that. The kids see that. You know, if they see the father, okay, fine, he goes and he dovens and this and that. But when it comes to business, there's no, you know, integrity. There's no honesty. Like, you know, if, if you tell your kid, okay, tell him I'm not home. And you're right there. You know, and if you are not... If we are not honest in other areas, they 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 they, they, they have their antennas up. They could pick all the nuances, right? So this this is you know the, the, the chinuch is about really providing the kids an overall safe environment, safe and secure from all these influences that unfortunately we are exposed to in this century. And on the other hand, to create the proper envir- environment at home. It's so important, right, that, you know, there is Shalom Bayit at, at home, or at least I constantly tell parents, if there are any uh, agree- disagreements, it should be uh, in, in private. The kids should, should see only love and respect, right? That's, you know, uh, it's, uh, it, 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 it's, it's something that all the gedolim, uh, they, 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 they point out to this. When we provide the kids... It's an overall, overall environment, whether it's in the house, the relationship that we have, and also outside the house, and to do our best to, to really, you know, we just had, we had, we were talking to some parents, like, you know, where did this kid get this, uh, all this inappropriate stuff? 
turned out that you know, they had an old laptop that they thought you know, it was in the house. And uh, the kid has got a, I don't know, the kid was, it wasn't not, not from our community. It was a kid like, you know, 10, 11 years old. He had got to figure out all the thing and everything. It was exposed to everything. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, friends, we, we could secure the school environment. But, you know, who they, they associate with other, with cousins, <coughs> the outside, etc., etc. <laughs> it's really, it's, it's a very, very, whole, you know, difficult task that I don't think ever, ever any Jewish families, right, had these kind of challenges. It was never, right? These, these, these are the 21st century challenges and um, that, you know, we, we need, we need, we need to, 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 to t- tackle. And, um, and with that term, we have to daven. We have to daven when we, when we, when we, when when we conduct ourselves properly and um, put our kids in schools that, you know, they have these gu- guidelines. I said, you know, Torah schools, this is the policy. The more modern uh, schools, they say, no, it's, it's a, uh, an environment that we have to deal with and it's better if they are already, you know, we trust them and with this and that from a younger age, which I, I, I believe it's a very grave mistake. I believe this is a very grave mistake I uh, I tell the kids you know I have uh, I went I went to Yeshiva after I graduated from college right so you know it's it, you can and I and I came from a background like you know in Israel the schools that I went to was like you know more modern schools and unfortunately it doesn't work I really don't think it's it's a it, it's a good policy of like you know at this young age to trust the kids that now they could have the smartphones and all the access to the internet. And they're going to keep, keep clean. It's not their fault. And obviously we have uh, all of us on a regular basis. We have to be with Palin. That Hashem should, should, should help us to be successful in this holiest mission. And by Ezrat Hashem, I hope everybody, wherever their kids are, they should have nachat shel emet from their children. That they should be <laughs> successful to raise them in... Torah, and to educate them to be Obed Hashem B'Simcha. It's very important. It's very important. If it's not, if it's not B'Simcha, it's not going to go. Right? I, uh, you know, you see, it's a famous story that, you know, Rav Shach, his son, is a religious uh, person, but he's a professor in a, one of the prestigious universities in Israel. Fully observant. But, you know, Rav Shach would have loved his son to take over Bir Rosh Hashiva. And then there was, a, there was a bookkeeper in the yeshiva that his son became a Rosh Hashiva. <laughs> so, so, so Rav Shach himself said, How come, why did it happen? He said, because it's my fault, Rav Shach said. Because, you know, I would, with my son constantly on Shabbat, I would talk about what did Rambam say here and that, I, you know. And, and uh, my bookkeeper, I was good to hear, kind of singing, Shirei Shabbat, etc., you see, because over there it was Basimcha, look at look, look at the results. It's very, very important that you know, it has to be, you know, the kid the environment in home at home has to be Basimcha. It cannot be like you know, it's like a military, you know, it has to be all done with all the gudarim, with all the, that you're talking about. But the general atmosphere has to be has to be lively, has to be Basimcha, right? To do the mitzvot Basimcha, and the kids, the kids should see how their parents enjoy doing the mitzvot, right? To conclude, you know, uh, the Moshe Feinstein is famous, right? You know, he said he knew, he knew uh, families that came to America and the Mamash were Moser Nefesh. Every week they would be fired because they want to work on Shabbat. Every week. And then their kids, they left everything. So uh, uh, why did it happen? The, first, the parents were like, you know, so Moser Nefesh. They would, you know, they would never work on Shabbat. But how come the kids didn't continue? Because the parents used to complain, oh, oh they, again, because of Shabbat, I, I, I lost my job. And they would constantly quetch. They would c- complain, and these, oh, glad kosher meat is so ex- expensive. Being a, they would always complain. So the kids don't want to have, have such a life that it's all uh, like you know, complaining, etc., etc. Right? There was a guy that, you know, from that generation, that from all the pink slips, that he got 
If he was fired, he would be fired by, in a job because he wouldn't go for Shabbat. He took the, all the pink slips and he made a decoration for his sukkah. He would tell his kids, Baruch Hashem, I, look, I, I, you know, he would do it with simcha. I mean, people would do it and quetch. But the, the, that's why the kids don't want to continue. But when a person is, when the mitzvot are done with simcha, this is that, Be'ezrat Hashem, Be'ezrat Hashem is going to stick with them and everybody should have nachat shel emet from all their children. Amen, Kenny Hiratso.